Something I'm super into lately is learning all of the tracking tools that are in Resolve and how we can use them to our best advantage. And one of those is the magic mask that's in Fusion. I think it's a little misunderstood. It's a little bit touchy. So I'm going to kind of show you how I would use that to make a blur over an object for legal reasons. Let's get started over in the edit page. And let's uh, duplicate a uh, the comp that I was working on. So I'm going to just Option, drag it over, makes a duplicate. And all of a sudden, as soon as I do that, boom, we've lost our tracking data from the magic mask that I just showed you. And that's because the magic mask that is in Fusion is, uh, is an object mask. So if you're on the color page, you have two options of magic mask. One is object mask, this guy right here. The other one is person mask. Person mask can hold more detail. Uh, it holds more tracking information when you make duplicates. Object mask absolutely does not. So a few ways of versioning this out, I'm going to show you right now. First one is, uh, let's go to the edit page. And uh, I'm going to start from scratch and right click and say, reset fusion composition. And that's going to get rid of all the work that I had just done in fusion. So we're starting from scratch on this clip. Uh, once it refreshes, there it goes. And then you'll notice this little star thing still is there. That's just saying that it had a thing on it. It, it really should go away. And then the way you can get it to go away is go to another page and then back and you'll see that that's gone. So the way I would version this out is option shift to drag it up. Go to over here, call it comp4. So basically, I'm taking the original file name, appending a scene and comp number, just like Ed does. Um, it seems to work really good, so we're going to keep going with that. The other thing is I'm going to work directly on this clip. I'm not going to use, if you right-click, there's Fusion Clips and VFX Connect Clips. Those are great if you've got tons of stacks of clips, but the issue is you lose your time code of your base plate. So. What that means is over here you can see 11 hours, 40 minutes, you know, 39 seconds, 20 frames. That goes to like one or zero if you do the um, fusion clip or connect clip, which makes it kind of a pain in the butt when you're conforming things. That's my take on it. You can do what you want, but I'm going to use this, and it also gives us the source resolution of the clip to work with over in fusion. So if I take a look, this clip is uh, UHD resolution. If I did this on a 1080 timeline like I'm on and you do Fusion Clip or this, uh, it's going to render it down to uh, to a, a 1080 version, um, especially that the Fusion Clip, the one that's built in here. This is for the Fusion standalone, um, which is cool. Um, just know that's why I'm going in this way. To open in Fusion, you can click the button. It'll take the top on the stack, or you can right-click and say Open in Fusion page. OK, um, to work with Magic Mask over here, you want to have two viewers to draw on it. So you're basically drawing a reference frame that everything else tracks around. So you pick a frame where you got the guy, I'm going to take this guy right here and, and blur him out, where you got him full frame and as focused as possible. So this is a tough one because he's, he's actually kind of blurry from the motion blur or the focus. Either way, uh, I don't want to show the easiest example because everything in tutorials looks easy when in fact it's not. So I'm going to take the original clip, which is media one, uh, media in one and throw that by clicking and dragging up to the left window so we have a full screen version and then I'm going to open up the the magic mask tool the shift space magic mask and I'm going to put the magic mask state of the clip in the right one by clicking and dragging over here you can also push one and two on the keyboard that's what these dots are down here uh, if I push three that would take that over to my um, um, sorry I'm gonna do that on this one Three over here that would put that on my black magic output that's what that is but let's get started with magic mask you find a frame you like you're gonna have the tool selected which means it has orange around it like that okay and you start drawing on it now the thing that you might not realize is you want small strokes of high contrast you don't want super long strokes so I'm gonna take my little pointer here by the way you can zoom in with command mouse wheel to really kind of get a, a closer view I'm gonna get his head with all that contrast area, and we can zoom in over here and see what we've gotten. Okay, we're getting some of that area up above. It doesn't quite know because it's the back of a dude, um, but that's okay. We're just using this for blurring. We're gonna get his leg, we're gonna get his shoe, maybe his other shoe, and let's try to get some of his bag too. Okay, there are negative strat strokes you can do as well, right here. Um, you can hold, um, what is it called, uh, option and then kind of do a negative stroke to get away some of that stuff. 
Uh, sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. It looks like it did give us a better reference frame, so let's just try with this. Oh, the other thing is you can you can make the track uh, or we can make the mask a little bit softer, less hard if you choose better, and then you can pull this in. Um, but in our instance, I want faster because that's what this is all about. I want to do a tight mat here that I can refine later for a blur that's not going to require as much rotoscoping of elements that maybe don't need to be blurred in the frame. Okay. So anyways, uh, the reference frame is set up. You can see it's a keyframe right there. Okay. Uh, to get back to that keyframe, everything has to be tracked from the keyframe. You push this button over here, go to reference frame. And I'm going to track towards the beginning of the clip. This is button right here, track reverse. Now, if you're not getting great results, I recommend always going back to your reference frame and starting over getting new, um, new strokes on there, new, new information to, to, to try to work with. Uh, we've, you can see we've clearly lost his face, but that's okay because we're going to get that with um, a little bit of an expansion. I'm going to show you how to do in, in the next step. So that looks good. Uh, we're going to go back to the, the reference here and we'll go towards the end. That's this button here to track those uh, those keyframes forward towards the end. All right, uh, we're good to go. Uh, we got we got a decent mat that we can work with. I'm going to push this lock button here so hopefully <laughs> we don't actually lose any tracking data although I've noticed if you do click on here it still seems to to have an effect so be careful not to click on this window with magic mask selected okay or you'll be mad at yourself you'll have to redo stuff <laughs> alright so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is turn this into right now it's an RGB image I just wanna get the mask out of this just the black and white mask and the way you can do that is by shift space using a bitmap okay and as soon as you put the bitmap on, it thinks that you want to attach that to the magic mask, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to click here to disconnect it. I'm going to disconnect this by clicking the blue area, and I'm just going to feed the magic mask into the bitmap, okay? So we're taking an RGB image into the background here, and what that does, if I flick this up in here, it makes a black and white mat. It makes a mask, okay? I'm going to click over here and hit Command F to see full screen. Same thing over here, Command F gets you, or sorry, fit to window. Uh, maybe I can zoom out a little bit because these are different different sizes. And the way this works is kind of simple from here. You can just apply a blur and then mask off the blur with this mat. You've got two options for blurs. One is this guy right here. Okay, that's just a regular blur. And you feed the blur the image, the background image, like this over here. Hasn't done anything yet because we haven't cranked up the parameter. Go to blur size, and we're blurring the whole image. Now to isolate the blur to just the dude, you take the output of the bitmap, feed it into the blue transparency of the blur, and there we go. We've got him masked out. Now if you're new to Fusion, you're like, you go back to the edit page, you're like, I don't have anything over here, Chadwick. What's going on? The reason why, nothing's hooked up to media out. So media out means it's going to render out to the timeline. So back over here, you know, we, we've got it masked out. Now it's like super, super tight. It's not very refined. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, in fact, maybe I don't like this type of kind of blur, but I want to be able to come back to this state or this, this version of, of what I'm working on. The way you can retain the tracking data in here and keep iterating is using the versions that are inside of Fusion, not using timeline uh, you know clips down here so back over here in fusion uh, the way you iterate on this and keep that tracking data is you go to clips up here and I'm on this clip right over here 35 on the timeline you right click on here I'm um, currently on this uh, composition one apparently I must have loaded a second one but I'm gonna say create new composition and now I should be on composition three and Apparently, I still lost my tracking data. No, I didn't. Tracking data is still there. It just it just fooled me there for a second. For some reason, it it uh, it went it went full screen blurry on me. It just needs to 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 cache. So the tracking data is still there. And now, if I apply the blur, we're we're back to where we started. But I'm on a new version. So clips right over here. 
If you want to go back to the other version, which is comp one, you could do that. But we're on comp three right now. No, that's there. Um, let's let's do a couple of things. One, let's say instead of we want using this blur, I'm going to delete this blur. Let's say we want to use mosaic blur. That's the other kind that Resolve has. You can also do this in the color page. Mosaic blur is like those those blocks. I'm going to hold shift and drag this to the right side. If you do it, well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's just basically you hold shift until it turns blue, and that connects that into the background. And this gives us those blocky things. And you can adjust these quite a bit. It has a lot of flexibility. It's a good effect. Um, take this guy, plug this into the transparency of mosaic blur. And we've got you know that tracking over there as well. Now, this mask here is, is maybe a little bit too tight. And so one way you can deal with this uh, to sort of expand it out or soften it would be to add a matte control after this. So instead of feeding this in directly, there's a tool here called this one, matte control. You feed this into the background of matte control. And I'm gonna throw this up over here so we can see what we're doing. And there's really just two controls that you need to sort of expand and soften this out. One is going to be the, um, the what do you call it, the blur. If you blur it, that kind of softens it out. And then expand right here, it's going to push it out a little bit further. Okay, So that, that basically means when we plug this output into the mask of mosaic blur, we're, we're covering it a little bit more. Okay. We still see right there at the beginning, we got his face in there. And we may have maxed this out. So that's I'm kind of glad this happened because there are limits to using. Uh, looks like I can just barely get it with matte control. There are a little bit of limits to using um, a matte control. So let's, let's pretend I couldn't go that far with it. Let's say I could only get to this far, right? And we still see his face, which would be a huge problem on that frame. Well, before this, we can, because we're using just a black and white mat here, you can use the tool then here that's called a road dilate. And what a road dilate will do, a road dilate um, will expand that mat area out. And so, oh, here's the issue. So this, this happens all the time. When you're using these tools, they sometimes automatically get entered into the wrong input. And I was like, where's my image? It's going into the mask input. Anytime you're working with just a straight mask like this, they probably need to be chained into the, the yellow background input. Now that a road dilate is plugged into the background, you should be able to take the road amount and basically you can push this out much, much further. Okay, so it's taking that, that mat and and kind of pushing those pixels out a little bit further. Then you could blur this afterwards if you wanted to, or, or vice versa. But the matte control kind of does a little blurring for us, so we'll plug that into matte control. And now we're kind of a little bit more extended than we were previously. If I take this, you should be able to see we're covering up his face right there a little bit better. Make sense? Again, um, this workflow could probably be refined, but I just kind of wanted to show how you can get a mat out of Magic Mask that could be usable for things like blurs, not just color correction, which, which is what it was made for originally. Okay, um, To render this sucker out, you go back over to the edit page. Okay, And what I, my preference on, on take the way I deal with this is you could yeah you can just right click and say render in place and call it a day like if you needed alpha you could do that um, but I think there's kind of a better way because what render in place does is it again it gets rid of your time code so your time code ends up going to one hour again what if you, this was like a final comp or something that you actually wanted to be able to refer back to later on well the only way I found to retain your original source time code is to mark the clip and render on the deliver page as if it was like a daily. So I've got that selected like this. I've got a name here, which I'm gonna copy because I wanna render this out using individual clips, okay? Uh, codec, probably use ProRes 4x4. 
and turn your audio off. You don't need audio. Use a custom name, which is the name of the clip that you had assigned over on the other page. You know, set it to where you want it to go. Add to render queue, render. And then basically you're going to bake out this clip with this, this new name and then pull it right back on in. Um, I'm gonna, to find it, I'm going to right click here, say reveal in finder, and then back to the edit page. And a quick way to drag this back onto your timeline is just find where you want it to go, get rid of your in and out marks, go to your finder, drag that sucker down. And now you have a baked out, you know, ProRes, probably four by four, not proxy. I'm just trying to save space of that clip with the effect applied. And we know where it came from because, you know, time codes match. We have the information of the clip name that was baked into the render file. You, know, you change the color so that you know this one isn't the same as the one below. And then, you know, that's it. Uh, you can easily loop that sucker around and playback should be much better than if it was just trying to play the, the fusion clip. And because we baked this effect in, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, any of the the cached frames from Magic Mask getting lost at some point down the road when you duplicate. Because it's just a, a flat clip, you could duplicate this all you want. The, the, the effect is baked in, just like if it was rendered in place, but the added benefit is where we're retaining our time code. Use Magic Mask. Put it into a bitmap. These are all the yellow lines. Make sure you're not going blue lines. And then feeding that black and white image into the blur.